the St. Regis Parish family gathers to celebrate the second Sunday in the season of Advent. We welcome as presider today, Monsignor James Gaston, senior priest active in our diocese. There are several announcements. A reminder that all gifts with attached tags from the giving tree must be brought to Gillen Hall by tomorrow after mass. Next Sunday, December 17th at 3 p.m., the St. Regis Parish musicians will offer an hour of meditative music consisting of solo handbells and organ pieces with scripture readings to give us an opportunity to reflect on the birth of Christ and his presence in our lives. The Women's Faith Sharing Group will meet this Monday, December 11th at 6.30 p.m. in the conference room. All women, ages 18 and older, are invited to join us as we socialize, pray, and depend our faith experiences, deepen our faith experiences. Please contact Karen in the Office of Faith Formation for more details. The St. Regis Parish Communal Penance Service will be this Tuesday at 7 p.m. There will be seven priests present to hear confessions. Please see the bulletin for a list of all penance services this week at the different churches in our area. That's this Tuesday at 7 p.m. here at St. Regis Communal Penance Service. Please pick up the hymnal and turn to the opening hymn, number 471, on Jordan's Bank, number 471. Good evening. Good evening. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. We are at the second Sunday of Advent. Two candles are lit. Now, with all these lights on, that doesn't make a difference. If we turned out all the lights, and only those two candles were lit, we would see a little bit more light than we would have seen last Sunday. The symbolism is as we draw closer to the coming of Christ in our daily lives, there is more light. And don't we need it? All of our sins are about the darkness of our life. Let us ask for forgiveness, pardon, and peace. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned 
in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort. Give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the desert prepare the way, of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain. The rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up onto a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, Hear is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom and leading the youths with care. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise, as some regard delay, but he is patient with you not wishing that any one should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be, conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by far. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. with you. The beginning of the gospel of according to Saint Mark. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, behold I am sending my messenger ahead of you, he will prepare your way a voice of one crying out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. 
People of the whole countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him, and they were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey. And this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, the gospel figure this evening, second Sunday of Advent, is who? John the Baptist. He has a unique role in the coming of Christ. He is to point, he is not the one because they came to him in the scriptures. Even the many people, came, are you the one or should we wait for somebody else? They thought, many people thought John himself was the coming Messiah. He wasn't. He was the messenger of the one who would come and is to wait, wake up and set the people up for the one who was coming after him. And he got in a lot of trouble. He lost his head over this. He was beheaded by Herod. Um, uh, let's look at John the Baptist. He looks like a wild figure here, wearing camel's hair. I don't think that was a, a jacket from Fifth Avenue. <laughs> and wearing a, a belt. And he's, he's port, he port, uh, the description of John the Baptist is taken from the Old Testament, uh, the, the prophet Elijah. Same, same description. And he ate... Um, locusts and wild honey. So it's kind of like a wild man. Uh, he would get your attention, I guess. Well, he did. Now, um, but his, what more, we don't know much about him, but what's most important for our sake is let's look at John the Baptist as a symbol as a, he has, there's a deeper meaning. What is the role that he performs that all of us need in our lives? He's the one who, point, last week it was wake up, uh, be alert, assuming we're kind of half, half dead and half sleeping. Wake up. W wake up to what's going on around you. Well, we need people in our lives that help us day by day wake up and not just get out of bed. <laughs> But we need someone, we need, sometimes we need people around us to kind of prod us. I, one of my images over the years of the Holy Spirit, when you think of the Holy Spirit, what do you think of? A bird? A dove? Fire? I think of the Holy Spirit as a needle this long. <laughs> we need to be prodded off our you-know-whats to get moving interiorly because we're so lackadaisical about a lot of things. But um, the role of John the Baptist is to point to somebody else, not to himself. There's too many people around who love to point to themselves. I, look how great I am. This is, it's not about his greatness. He has to, in a sense, decrease. His role is to point who's coming behind me is more important than I am. Now, I hate to use examples from 100 years ago because there's young people here who weren't alive and were not blessed to watch TV many years ago. We had very few options. When I say the name Johnny Carson, does anybody in this church remember Johnny Carson? 
Okay, you just told your age. You kids didn't put your hand up. Who was his sidekick? Ed McMahon. You're right on. Ed McMahon. Here's Johnny. John the Baptist. Ed McMahon plays John the Baptist to Johnny Carson. He set us up. He was not the show. And I like to remember that, that example. I think that's as black and white as it gets, the role of somebody who's put, it's not, he, it's not his show. He's setting it up for the, the real guy to come after him. So, apparently the Lord in our lives, spiritually now, uses um, people to get our attention. And what is it, uh, we heard it buried in that second reading from Peter tonight. We long for, and this is the coming of the Messiah. They thought he was going to throw out the Romans and establish, and like what they're fighting in the Middle East right now. They thought it was going to be, you know, it was going to be a war and there were going to be winners and losers. The Romans would be driven out and the people would have a political state. Jesus did not come for that. A ki the kingdom of heaven is not about, a, it's not political. It's not a kingdom or, it's as, as, or power. It's the way God wants people and created us to live somewhat now, but for, forever in a certain way. We were made for love. The kingdom of heaven is where love shines forth. And it's about not just what we do. So when you're talking love, you're talking about relationships. So the kingdom of heaven is always going to be about the love that has to replace the hate so that our relationships with each other are better, which means there's a ton of forgiveness required. I don't want to stay alienated from you. We may fight, but I don't want to stay there. We need connectedness. One of the issues that is very prominent during the holiday season is loneliness. For various reasons, obviously, but the ultimate loneliness is being disconnected from any human love or nobody cares we we go crazy without this if nobody cares for me and cares if i live or if i die or if if i if we can't live without this and we need those in our lives so who are the people who help us to get on the straight and narrow in our lives is your doctor a John the Baptist? Watch your diet. Take these pills. Do you listen to your doctor? I know people who won't go to the doctor because they don't want to hear what he wants to tell them. Well, that's smart. I know what he's going to say. I don't want to hear it. Are you in that category? How many people have you played John the Baptist who said, you need to clean up your act and you need to do this and that, and they didn't, and they paid for it later, and you were ready to say, see, I told you. Now, we're happy when we, we did it to others, but when others do it to us, we're not so. I don't want to hear it. But we need help. But ultimately, what we long for is right relationships with each other. It's not just about me having a better life. I want to have a better life with you. That's why family can't live with them or without them. Nobody's perfect. We always look at everybody else's family. I, growing up, uh, why, aren't my, why aren't we like my friends' families? They would always get away with murder, not us. Why weren't we like them? They had other problems that we didn't have and we didn't even know it. Our own. Family is a critical piece of our development. And we never outgrow it. 
And how do we maintain this? Uh, family, friendship, real friendship, not I'm using you for my purposes, but I would be there with you, I would be there for you when it mattered most. Who could you say, I, it, hopefully it's your spouse and your family, can we say that for one another? But there's not a lot of that around. If we're not careful, it's like do unto others before they do it unto you, the reverse of the golden rule. And so we're very suspicious. Good friendship. That's a connection. How does one grow to be a trustworthy friend? But it's who we are is connected to who, you know, it's, it's the relationships, not what we accomplish. It's how are we, um, you know, as I looked over my years as a priest over half a century, I'm looking, what did I accomplish as a priest? I met a ton of people. Built a church. It's there. Nice. But what the, my most cherished memories are the people I was privileged to meet and contact. Some of them we didn't get along. It's not, per, it's not a cakewalk. It's not perfect. But as I look back, that's what it was. Um, I learned this, this whole thing about family in my own. Uh, I'd, I'd just like to use this example. And it's my mother. I come from an Italian family. There, I know there's some Italians in this parish. I hope it's beyond it Italian ethnicity. But I'm going to use, the, use that card tonight. Um, um, several years after my father passed away, and my mother was still in good health, she came to live with me when I was in the lower borough. And uh, eventually in the rectory, I had my mother, and all mothers went to the same school. They're all the same. All mothers are the same. They're in charge. <laughs> I was the pastor. She was in charge. <laughs> she would even tell me who I was supposed to go see who was sick. <laughs> Thank God for mothers. Anyway, I also had Monsignor Conway, who used to be the pastor in Murraysville and Irwin, good friend. He had retired, and I had invited him separately to come and live with me. So in this rectory, I had my mother and Monsignor Conway, who lived downstairs. My mother lived in one section. Of the, it was a big house. I lived in one section. I, was, I brought down the median age in the rectory. Okay. <laughs> they were total opposites. He's Irish. And my mother was Italian. Okay. And of course, I am too. So, food. He, everything my mother cooked, he didn't like. Everything he cooked, which he didn't do very well, she turned her nose up at. So we went through all this craziness in the house. But the key thing with my mother, uh, this happened at Christmas and Easter. We, Chris, uh, Italian Christmas Eve, you know, the seven fishes and all that stuff, which is an Italian-American thing now. But that became an issue. And um, so we would be, Chris, the Christmas Eve dinner, even after things had changed from our homestead, my mother still wanted to do things and, to, and bring family together. Uh, of course, Christmas Eve in the parish. Um, so the Eve, Christmas Eve morning, I said, I'm going over to church. I got to get ready for Christmas Eve. Well, no, we have to cook. I said, I got to go to church. Well, no, I'm all, I need help. I said, I'm the pastor of this church. Guess what I ended up doing? <laughs> Stayed in the kitchen. And we had Christmas Eve dinner with family between the masses. We figured it out over a couple years. And same with Easter. Same thing. Now, and the, ch the church was fine. <laughs> I was going to get over and putz. It wasn't even necessary. It was more important that I be in that kitchen helping her. I'll never forget this. Because it was about the family. We got to get, we have to take care of our family at Christmas Eve, and your job is to host it. Oh, okay. That, that really is what it's all about. And as I look now at what it's really all about, it wasn't the food and preparing the meal. 
It wasn't just what was on the table. It was, and over the years, looking way back, for all of us, who do we miss that sat at that table over these years? Why do we miss them? Because we're connected to each other. Living or dead, we're still family. The kingdom of heaven is we're still connected and we will be forever. Don't trash it or think it's not important in this life. Live for others in a world that says, take care of yourself and tell them to where they can go. It's counter-cultural. We need John the Baptists pointing to Jesus in our lives who point us to the right way to live all the time and to be more respectful, to be more caring, and to reach out to build the bonds of love and justice and peace. Where nobody else goes, we want to change the whole world, we can't, but we have influence in our homes and in our places where we go every day. That's where the kingdom of God is going to come. So uh, as we're thinking, uh, preparing for the holidays, um, let's reflect on the blessing. The kingdom of God is like our family. We're all together in it. How do we relate? How could we do better? Uh, in first confessions with children, my uh, penance for second graders has always been clean your room. Oh, well, who dirtied it? You clean it. Now, I don't know how they went home and immediately it was sparkling, but focus on caring for your family. Make it easier for them, not just yourself. What starts in our childhood will follow us the whole way through our lives. We need John the Baptist. God sends John the Baptist. And sometimes he sends us to be John the Baptist to others in order that the kingdom, that we will get it right, that we will repent of our nonsense and craziness, return to love, and build the family of God that will live forever. Let us profess our faith in the creed. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnated the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now offer our prayers of intercession to the Lord. The response is, come, Lord Jesus, for the church. May we spread the glad tidings of God's coming as he gathers and comforts his people, we pray. Come, Lord Jesus, for public officials. May they respect and honor all those who elected them to govern fairly and justly, we pray. Come, Lord Jesus. For God to bring peace quickly to Ukraine and Gaza 
and take away the suffering of your people, we pray. Come, Lord Jesus, for an increased awareness among our young men and women of their responsibility to answer the Lord's call into a vocation as a priest, deacon, or vowed religious, we pray. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus, for our beloved dead, that they may know eternal rest and peace and light, we pray. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. During this Mass, we remember in a particular way the living and deceased members of the St. Regis Parish family, we pray. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. For the prayers we hold deep in our hearts, which we now pause to add. Good and gracious God, we ask you to hear our prayers, to be with us and lead us from dark, the darkness of selfishness to the light of your love for you and for all of our brothers and sisters, and so build the kingdom that will last forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name for our good and good of Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings this evening. And since we have no merits to please plead our own cause, come to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through our Lord Jesus Christ. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago and Open for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which we only now dare to hope. 
And so with the saints and angels, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon him like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence this evening and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Larry, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, St. Regis, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. Let us pray to the Father as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory of your Lord is now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share together a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Please pick up the hymnal and turn to the communion hymn, number 660, Take and Eat, number 660. Spoken. 
captive free. I am the life that raises up the dead. I am your peace, true peace, my gift to you. Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking of these sacred mysteries this evening, you may teach us to ju judge wisely the things of earth and to hold firm to the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by the way we live this week. Amen. Have a good week. God bless you. Please pick up the hymnal and turn to the closing hymn, number 466, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Number four, six, six. path of 